Okay, so the next technique we are going to look at uh, is called parametric and zone indexes. This is actually not an optimization per se. It's a way to do a semi-structured search. If you remember from chapter one, we talked about real data not exactly being unstructured but being semi-structured. And we had that slide where I pointed out how even a PowerPoint slide has, you know, a title field and then it has these bullet points and then smaller bullet points under that bullet point and so on. So in reality, your corpus is going to be, is going to have some kind of a structure. Even HTML documents, XML documents will have tags which impose some kind of a structure on the document. So, what sort of structure can we exploit for information retrieval? Well, we could look at some of the structured information that is usually present for most documents on the web at least. For example, you know, if, you, if you've ever generated a Microsoft Word document, you know that, you know, if you just look at the properties, it'll have an author. Uh, there'll be a title, of course, for the document. There'll be a date of publication or a date at which that file was created. Um, language itself could be encoded in the metadata. You could have, for example, XML documents could specify what language they are in. Uh, the file format could be another indicator of the kind of document it is. So all these fields are called metadata. They don't exactly correspond to the body of the document, but they contain some meta information about the document. And because this meta information is relatively structured, okay, there are, one can define a format for the author field or for the title field or for the date of publication. So recall that if your data is structured, then you can do more sophisticated queries on it. So we could create a separate index on each of these fields. Okay, so you, you while parsing your um, documents, your corpus, you could create the standard inverted index as before based on the body of the text that you are parsing. In addition to the standard inverted index, you could create, which is based on the body of the text or the content of the documents, you could create separate indexes for these fields. Okay, because sometimes a user may want to search for documents based on this metadata information. For example, the user may like to have documents that are authored by William Shakespeare in the year 1601, which contain the uh, text, alas, poor Yorick. Okay, so the year of publication, 1601, is an example of a metadata field. The author's last name, Shakespeare, is another example of a metadata field. So in a parametric index, or in a field index, you would have postings for each field value. Okay, so there would be a parametric index for the author field. There would be another parametric index for the title field. There would be another parametric index for the date of publication field, and so on. And of course, there would be a standard index for the body uh, of, of uh, built on the uh, text contained in the body of the documents. So uh, some of these fields, for example, could be numerical values, in which case you can store them in probably more sophisticated ways. For example, you could uh, you could store you could have you could build the dictionary in the form of a B tree like we did for uh, in the chapter on tolerant retrieval. Okay, so if, if a user searches for all documents published in the year 1601, 
1601 would be a term in the parametric index built on dates. So you would access that term and then from that term in you know from that uh, from the record for that term in the B tree you would then access the postings list which contain all documents published in the year 1601. If I want all documents published in the range 1900 to 1920, I could use the B tree. I could collect all the records corresponding to years from 1900 to 1920, which is easy to do in a B tree. And then look at the postings list and take the union of all those documents. And of course, you can have more complicated AND queries saying that I would like all documents published in the years 1900 to 1920 and authored by uh, Albert Einstein. Okay, so you would then take the list of documents that are generated from the parametric index for the date and then intersect that list with a list of documents generated from the parametric index for the author field. Okay, so you take the intersection of both the uh, resulting postings lists and then you'll get all documents authored by Einstein in that uh, b between the years 1900 and 1920. Okay, so this is a field index and then you have zone indexes. Okay, a zone is just like a field except that the amount of text that can be contained in a zone can be arbitrarily long. Okay, for example, the title of a document could be arbitrarily long. The abstract of a, docu of a paper, for example, could be arbitrarily long. In fact, in early days when um, memory was a lot more scarce, what people would do is they would build uh, IR systems not on the full text of the papers, but on the abstracts of the papers. Okay, in fact, that was the original idea of having an abstract for a paper. It was not so that people could read and uh, read a summary of the paper. It was more because the abstract could be indexed in uh, in an IR system. So abstracts, references, titles, these are all uh, fields that can be stored in, these are all zones, okay? A zone is different from a field in that. A field has a well-defined uh, data type and a limited size, okay? Uh, whereas a zone can have an arbitrary amount of text. And just like you build parametric indexes on fields, you can build zone indexes on zones. And you can have queries that are more complex than the kind of queries we've been looking at. For example, a query could say, find all documents where the title contains the word merchant and the uh, body contains the phrase gentle rain. Okay, so you would have one index for the body, another index for the title zone. You would take the documents returned by both indexes and then take their intersection. Okay, similarly, you know, we looked at this example from the first lecture. Find all documents where the title is of the form STR wildcard SUP and the title contains, uh, where the author, name of the author is STR star SUP uh, or, or OUP and the title contains the words C++. Okay. So looking at the techniques that you've studied in this course, you should be able to, you know, you should be able to answer how to answer such queries now. Okay, you're going to build a wildcard index just on the names of the authors and then answer the first part of the query. And you can build a normal index on the title and then answer the second part of the query and then take the intersection. Anyway, so we can take a break now. Uh, if you have any questions on the material covered so far, uh, you can ask right now before the break. Otherwise, we'll continue from this point after the break.
Uh, hello, sir. Yeah. Uh, so I just wanted to ask. Uh, uh, I just wanted to confirm, rather, like, is it just uh, like in the abstract, the indexes that are create that are being created are are they this identical to like uh, the indexes uh, that are there in the zones? Like, I mean, one more question is that uh, is do they go through the same uh, lemmatization, uh, stemming, all those things? Yeah, yeah, they go through the same thing. In fact, we are going to look at that in the very last slide of this uh, chapter. So you'll. You'll see a, an overall diagram which will show you the data flow in uh, all this. So, but but to answer your question in short, yes, as you're parsing the document, you know you'll be parsing the zone, uh, the the different zones of the document also, as uh, and the different fields. So, and the body of course. So, the same kind of steps will apply to the different portions of the document. Okay, you could turn off the microphone now so that I can uh, start speaking from the slide that is titled Example Zone Indexes. So, if you look at that slide, uh, you will see that there are two different ways that have been shown there on how to implement a zone index. In the top part of the figure, you can see three postings lists. Uh, these are three postings lists for the three terms William.abstract, William.title and William.author. Okay, so abstract, title and author are the zones of the document and William.abstract contains the doc IDs for those documents which contain the word William in the abstract uh, zone of the document. Okay, so earlier, if uh, we didn't have, when we didn't have the notion of zones, the postings list for William would contain all the documents that contain the word William in it. But now we are splitting a document into different zones, and we are having different uh, postings lists for different zones of the document. So the William.title postings list will contain the documents which have the word William in the title field. William.author is a list of doc IDs which have the word William in the author field. So if there's a query saying, give me all documents with William in the author field, your query will be treated as William.author. William.author is what you will look up in the dictionary and then retrieve the documents in that postings list. So you can see that here we don't have separate indexes for different zones. You have a single index but the dictionary terms are disambiguating uh, which zone you're looking at. Okay, So which zone you're looking at is sort of encoded into the dictionary itself. The index is single but the representation of different zones is different. Uh, it is separate in the uh, index. Another way to implement this would have been what is shown in the lower half of the figure where you have a single term called William but the postings for that term William contain not only the doc IDs but they also contain the zones in that document where the word William is found. For example, the very first posting says two dot author, comma two dot title. So this term William is present in the document with doc ID two. But more specifically, it is found in the author zone of the document and in the title zone. Okay, it's not it's not found in the body. Actually, this is a zone index, so we're not indexing the bodies here. There is a single zone index for the non-body uh, data in that document. The next posting says three dot author. That means this term William is present in the document with doc ID three in the author zone, and so on. So if I'm searching for William dot author, I will parse this postings list 
and for every document in that postings list I will check if the author field is mentioned in the posting or not if it is then I will append that doc ID to the answer list otherwise I'll just ignore it and move to the next posting right so you can see two different ways of implementing a zone index in the first implementation you are adding the information about the different zones in the dictionary and in the second implementation you are adding it to the postings the next slide the next slide is on tiered indexes this is a generalization of the high and low lists that we saw uh, last time where instead of having a single postings list you're going to have a hierarchy of postings lists from most important to least important and the importance of a postings list can be measured by something like the authority score of a document so <clears throat> the documents having the most authority will be in the most important uh, hierarchy list and so on so your inverted index is effectively split into this a, a series of tiers of decreasing importance each tier corresponding to a postings list of documents in a certain range of importance so what happens is when you have a query you're going to first look up the postings lists in the top tier okay, so if you have a query like William Shakespeare for example I will look up the top tier for William and I will look up the top tier for Shakespeare and then take the not the intersection but you know compute the cosine scores of uh, um, the, the, the query term with documents in that top tier if I get k documents in the result I'll just return them okay, assuming that the documents are sorted in decreasing order of uh, goodness score or authority score I just have to get k results and I can return the k results to the user but if I don't get if I don't find k documents then I will look up the two terms in the next tier okay, I will look up the documents that belong to the next tier so I'll drop to the next lowest tier and then again I'll start parsing the next tier um, and then you know again depending on whether I'm not I'm able to generate a total of K results I'll either stop there or drop to the next tier and so on so this is called a tiered index which an index which has different tiers and the next slide shows an example of a tiered index so the first uh, the first place that you will visit is tier 1 if you get k results in tier 1 you'll return those k results otherwise you'll drop to tier 2 if you get results uh, that are k long in tier 1 and tier 2 you stop otherwise you'll drop to the next tier, tier 3 so any questions about tiered indexes this diagram is a little I mean in this diagram the documents have been placed into tiers not based on their authority score because if they had been placed in the tiers based on the authority score then document one would have should have been present entirely in tier one right because the authority score is purely a function a static function of the documents but you see that document the posting for document one is present in both the you know all the three tiers that means the way these documents are placed into these three tiers is not based on the uh, authority score it's probably based on uh, something like term frequency and so on 
Okay, so if you have term frequencies, then obviously, you know, uh, it's going to be hard to do a linear time intersection. And so you'll need to do something like term at a time scoring in order to um, generate the results. But if this had been, if this tiered index had been built based on the authority score, then document one would have been present entirely in tier one. Okay, that's just one clarification I wanted to make. Any questions on this?